Hi, and welcome to this lesson on measuring rates of reaction. In the last lesson, we finished off our free energy topics. We were looking at how to calculate Gibbs free energy using enthalpy and various other parameters and entropy, of course. Um, and now we're moving on. We're still in physical chemistry, but a new topic. The rate of reaction is equal to the change in concentration of a reactant or a product over a given period of time. So they can be measured using different continuous monitoring methods. So here we've got the formation of a product or the concentration of the product measured throughout the reaction. And on this line here, we've got the concentration of the reactants, which is obviously going to reduce as the reaction carries through. What variables can be measured then in an experiment where we want to work out the rate? Well, if the product is a gas, we can use a gas syringe to collect that product and we can take a reading at set intervals of time. We can also measure the loss of mass. So we could do this by running our whole reaction on a mass balance. If the product is gaseous, for example, then the mass will go down as the gas escapes. Or you could just weigh the reaction, stop the reaction and weigh it at set intervals as well. We can measure a colour change. Of course, this is a lot more subjective. And especially if you're working with someone else, your interpretation might be different in terms of looking at that colour change. So you need to be careful. You could use other digital methods that can more accurately measure a colour change as well. We can measure the pH. So we could take pH readings at set times by using an indicator, for example, litmus paper, all sorts of things. Or we could use a pH probe and that would give us a digital reading and we can take set recordings at time intervals. Finally, we could measure the concentration of the product. There are lots of ways in which we can measure the concentration, colorimeters, all sorts. Again, you're measuring the concentration at set intervals of time. Oh, and one last one, we could measure electrical conductivity as well. I'll plot a quick graph here of concentration of a reactant over time. So of course my concentration is going to be highest at the start, and then let's just hypothesize that it's going to work in this sort of fashion. So then I'll draw my line of best fit following that pattern down. And from this, because I've got time, on my x-axis, I can work out the change in the concentration of the reactant over time. And that can give us, that's what rate is, we can work out the rate of reaction. So I want to work out, let's say I want to work out the rate at t equals 10. I can get on my point of 10 and I can draw a tangent to the line. Now I don't have a ruler here, so my line is not, my tangent is not going to be particularly fantastic. So there's my tangent and I can work out my rise over run. So I can take any point on that and work out how much change I've seen in my rise. So my moles per litre here over how much time has elapsed for that line. Remember, rise over run, which is the same as putting your value of the y-axis over your value for the x-axis, and that will give you the rate. Okay, so you may also get asked to calculate the rate over the first five seconds, for example. In that particular case, we want to take all of the values into account. We don't need to draw a tangent. So if we go up, we know that time, the run, is going to be over five. So we just want to work out I'm going to extrapolate upwards and I'm going to work out what the change was in that given time period, this number here. So that's my rise over run. And if I, I don't know, predict from this number five, I don't know, about 7.5, 7.5 over five will give me my rate in the first five seconds of that reaction. So the rate in the first five seconds we can see here is about 1.3 moles per litre per second. Overall, we can say that rate is the change in a reactant concentration or a product concentration, of course, over time. So remember, we can have the change in the reactant, so it would look something like this because the reactant is going to reduce over time, or we can have the change in the formation of a product. So my line C, for example, if I call it that, and that shows how I make my product over time and I can do exactly the same thing. I can calculate a tangent at a particular time to work out the rate at that specific time point, or I can calculate the rate over a given time. So how much, what was the rate over the first five seconds, for example, as I did in the previous question? Remember, 
the rate of reaction calculated from a product concentration, that will have a positive sign because you're making your product, you're going to have a positive gradient at any particular point. Whereas the calculated rate of reaction for a concentration line is going to be negative because that gradient is always going to be negative from the graph. But don't worry, it doesn't matter. Both forms are correct.